Hey, happy November everyone. If you want to help out with men's mental health, suicide prevention and fight against prostate and testicular cancer, then all you have to do is click that link in the description below and donate. Imagine if you and every single person subscribed to this channel donated just one pound. We could raise thousands. It's one month and one massive problem that we just don't talk about. Let's change that with one solution right here, right now. If you can, please give. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse and to a brand new video. Now the Doctor currently zooms around space in a blue box with a fam, a group of humans who the 13th Doctor met in Sheffield. However, if we were to really dive into the Doctor's past and examine who her family really was by blood and not just Bond, then not much is known. However, one person who without a doubt is related to the Time Lord is Jenny. That's the Doctor's daughter. That's right, the Doctor has a child who is just as energetic and in awe of the universe as the Doctor is aiming for the brilliance, lust for life and determination of her father, now mother. The Doctor's daughter only appeared in one episode of the show, however since then has had appearances in comics and even her own audio series. So in this video I'll be taking a look at the history of Jenny. So, during a surprisingly short war on the planet Messaline, between humans and half, both sides used machines to instantly create mentally programmed adults from the DNA of single individuals. So when the 10th Doctor, Donald Noble and Martha Jones arrived on Messaline, Jenny was made from a skin sample taken from the Doctor without his permission. The machine creating her from just a few of the Time Lord's cells sounds impossible, but really it's just a bit unlikely. That at that time nameless Jenny pushed a button which triggered an explosion. The tunnel the TARDIS team were in collapsed, cutting the group off from the half and Martha. Shortly after, Jenny was named by Donna from his description of her as a generated anomaly. Jenny's commander, Cobb, imprisoned the Doctor, Donna and Jenny. This gave Donna a chance to prove to the Doctor that Jenny was indeed his daughter by listening to Jenny's heartbeat. Like the Doctor, she had two hearts. However, the Doctor insisted that she was nothing more than an echo, and that a real Time Lord was so much more than blood, a shared code, a shared suffering, a shared history. Jenny helped the others escape by wooing their guard, Klein, and stealing his pistol. The doctor found his daughter was very capable, but she inclined towards violence. And with every passing minute, Jenny became more like the doctor, no longer using artillery and thinking of the conflict on Messaline. Now she dreamed of the exploration and excitement of the universe. Now, as the three of them made their way towards the source which Cobb and the Half both sought, Jenny spoke with the Doctor about the possibility of travelling with him, and he told her that he would never leave her. Even with the loss of his past family, the hole that created, filled with pain and emotions that fought against him as he looked at Jenny, knowing he would feel that pain every day, he still said yes. The Doctor told the respective parties to end the war, whereupon General Cobb aimed his gun and shot at him. Jenny jumped in the way of the bullet. She was shot through one of her hearts, and died. However, despite not experiencing regeneration, Jenny somehow came back to life. With her father having left the planet and believing her to be dead, something which affected him greatly, she stole a shuttlecraft and left Messaline. When asked where she was going, she restated Donna's earlier description of the Doctor's life. Oh, I've got the whole universe, planets to save, civilizations to rescue, creatures to defeat, and an awful lot of running to do. She then set off to explore the universe. Or not quite. It's not long after she ran out of fuel, the ship she stole was no TARDIS and was now dead in the water, unless she was as smart as her parent. Incredibly smart, to a point where with just a sparky shield generator, she could create an einstein rosen bridge, basically a wormhole manipulator allowing her random space travel. Now after a few adventures she ended up trying to go to this strange meteor or moon called Terabek, however it appeared on a 6 monthly basis near the planet Kolontor. So that's where she waited, making a living fixing tech and breaking hearts. Three months in, she designed her own spacesuit, claiming that if she was going to save people, she needed to look the part. Where Terebek finally appeared, she sped to the asteroid, finding the salvage of a lifetime, a Gallifreyan bowship. A ship used in the conflict between the Time Lords and the Great Vampires. The ship was adorned with the seal of Razalon, something that seemed familiar and foreign to Jenny. She quickly added it to her suit and stole the ship flying through the universe, and now it wasn't just space, it was time too. Jenny tracked her father through multiple incarnations, but he didn't stay in one place long enough for her to make contact with him. Although she found the Doctor in his 11th incarnation on Trentalor, she was unable to contact him because of Tasha Lem's barriers around the planet. Travelling around in a bowship, Jenny tracked the progress of a white hole to the planet Soltaf, where she encountered Captain Jack Harkness and Tara Mishra. She failed to save them as they were sucked into the anomaly, so she flew her bowship into the white hole but became trapped. She was saved by the fifth doctor in his TARDIS, who in doing so was pulled into the white hole to Jenny's distress. 
Jenny then travelled to St. Luke's University to find the 12th Doctor and tell him what had happened. After Nardole and Bill got a brief chance to know the Doctor's daughter, they were attacked by unit personnel including Kate Stewart and Osgood, who had been possessed by the White Energy. The four of them immune to the energy, due to being time travellers and having been exposed to Archer energy, managed to enter the TARDIS. However, it had merged with the version occupied by the 10th Doctor, Gabby Gonzalez and Cindy Wu, allowing Jenny and the 10th Doctor to reunite. They then quickly escaped the TARDIS and saw a white hole threatening to destroy the universe. They were saved from infected students by none other than the Ninth Doctor, whose TARDIS had also merged with its previous and future selves, and while searching for the Tenth Doctor's console room, Jenny ran into the Eighth Doctor and Josie Day, who worked with the other Doctors so that their TARDIS could escape the White Void. So, to recap, the Doctor's daughter found her father in multiple incarnations, teaming up with all of them and their companions to save the universe from a mysterious white hole created by a Type 1 TARDIS. The original, you might say. A TARDIS that just wanted some tranquility, and when the 11th Doctor tried to help it, things got out of control fast. Eleven sacrificed everything to try and save the poor sentient soul of the time machine, but in doing so showed the Type 1 that the universe has beauty and portrayal in equal measure. For every hero and harmony, there is horror and hell too. The Type 1 just wanted the universe to try and find peace, so tried to change it, even imprisoning the bowtie-loving Time Lord. To save the day this time, it would not only take every Doctor, but every version of the TARDIS too. Then who better to communicate with the Type 1 than the most widely travelled TARDIS in the universe? So with the universe safe once more, Jenny departed with the 10th and 9th Doctors, the latter saying that they will take her home due to her bowship having been destroyed. Sometime later, Jenny stole a ship. On board the ship was a man called Noah, who commanded the ship to take her away from a spaceport. A bounty hunter known as Cult 5000 arrived, halting her plans of escape. Jenny created a device called the Time Hopper and used it to travel through time on a single trip with Noah. Jenny and Noah arrived in a prison guarded by the Ood. Their only prisoner was Valderon. Valderon tried to escape by attacking Jenny's mind. Jenny believed she had escaped by activating her vortex manipulator once again, but instead brought herself and Valderon to Earth. The Ood followed them and began enslaving the minds of nearby humans. After the Ood found Valderon, Jenny reunited with Noah and the duo departed Earth. At one point, the pair were travelling to Kamasha. Jenny and Noah had helped the planet's natives to overthrow the Dragon Lord, the planet's dictator. And then in one of her other adventures, Jenny stowed away on board a ship, sensing that it was heading towards a temporal collision. The time ship it was crashing into was the fifth Doctor's TARDIS. Although Jenny soon confirmed that she was dealing with a younger version of her father, although the fifth Doctor didn't believe her claim that she was his daughter. He accepted her help in undoing the temporal collision after it was established that the Nine was trying to take advantage of the chaos. The Doctor and Jenny were separated after the collision was prevented, with the nature of the disruption preventing Eva retaining the memory of any of the meeting. Finally, at some other point, Jenny was captured by Adam Mitchell and trapped with many other companions of her father's. Along with the others, she was released by Frobisher and worked with the Time Lord to defeat multiple monsters. Now, her brief cameo doesn't do this story justice. If you want to know what really happened when Adam Mitchell got his ultimate revenge on the Doctor, then I'd love it if you check out this other video I made recently once we've tied up this Jenny timeline. So, Jenny is a great character full of wit and wonder and I'm glad we get to see more of her stories in comics and audios and even more with reference books called The um, the Doctor, His Lives and Times, saying that after leaving Messaline, Jenny actually met a man in a cantina who told her about how messages used to be placed in bottles and thrown into the sea. Jenny then wrote a letter to her father explaining that she wasn't dead, and while she didn't know how to find him, she was having fun and hoped to make him proud. She placed her letter in a bottle and hoped that one day her father would find it. I think as an idea to end on, it wraps up her character quite nicely, and I'm glad that the comics bring closure for her and the Doctor, because if you don't accept these stories, well, the Doctor would still think that Jenny died, an event that would have a sizable impact on anyone, Time Lord or not. So that is the history of Jenny, the Doctor's daughter. What did you think about extended history? What characters would you like me to take a look at next? And let me know in the comments below. Like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to know when I'm releasing new content and help the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.